So great, everyone. Hello, hello. Um, well, welcome to our session. Um, Jenny, you're we good? I think we should get started. I, yeah, let's do it. Oh, I it. see someone from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. What's up? <laughs> Send some All pizza right. my way, please. Yes, yes. So, since, especially now that we can't go anywhere. Got to get you some of that, that good. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You, were, you lived here, too, for a little bit. That's right. Too, oh, yeah. my gosh. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to our session um, about expanding your ERG and BRG footprint, um, training a local ambassador. So I am Jaquita Poole. My, I would say, main job is I am the Associate DNI Program Manager for our campus recruiting team. And I will tell you in a second, as we keep going, what my pride job is. And my name is Jenny Coys at Liberty Mutual. My role is Director of Business and Technology Solutions. It's just a fancy way of saying I try to make it easier for folks to do business with us. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Well, again, welcome. We're so excited that you stopped by to our session today. We are going to make this as interactive as we can being in this virtual world. And so we do have a lot of different polls and uh, questions that we're going to be asking you throughout the session. So the first one is coming on up. So make sure grab your phone or if you're, you know, obviously at your laptop, pop open a new screen and we want you to go to minty.com and you put this code in. And our first question that we want to ask everyone is, what is the first word that comes to mind when you think about expanding your ERG outside of your headquarters? One word I think we put in here that you can put in two entries <laughs> if it so does move you. But what's that first word that comes to your mind? Yes. Challenging. Yeah, that seems to be a theme. Important. I agree. We've got a nice mix of scary and excited words, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I think that biggest one obviously is coming through challenging opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunity. Yeah. Difficult. Intimidating, hopefully less so by the end of the hour. We'll see. All right, awesome. Well, first of all, I'm happy to see that the Minty is working. So that was a super scary moment for a second. So glad it's working. <laughs> Thank um, you for keep, participating. Yes, yes. Keep it on, keep it on coming. Um, and keep those out too, because again, we're going to ask you some questions to interact with us throughout this presentation and workshop. Um, the, like Jenny said, we're hoping to give you some context, um, how we trained our local ambassadors and some lessons learned throughout this session that hopefully makes it a little bit less challenging, difficult, scary. So I'm going to turn it over to Ginny to take us through our next exercise. All right. So we're, we're queuing you up with two of these mentee exercises because we want to make sure everybody's here and with us and uh, doing some virtual participation. Um, so your second question to start us off, how many cities are you in? People figured this out. Glad quick learners here on the call. <clears throat> so we've got a fair number of people who are in a bunch of cities, but also roughly similar numbers who are in less. Okay, lots of people in a lot of cities. Very cool. So what you're going to hear today is about, you know, our presence, how many cities we're in, and what we did to get people up to speed in those different cities. So this is kind of a, an intro to training those kinds of folks. Um, so think of it as kind of like a 101 to expanding your footprint through ambassador training as we go forward here. Thanks for the participation on the Mentee. Great to see that variety and a lot of folks who have gone to a lot of different places, which is exciting. Um, I think a lot of us are coming from a similar place here, but definitely some variety, which is great. Love it. All right. So we would be remiss if we didn't give you like a couple sentences about the company we're from, which we're really proud to work for. Um, so we're from Liberty Mutual Insurance. Um, this company has been around for over 100 years and we provide a variety of insurance products and services. You've probably seen our commercials, yellow is our color, we've got this emu that runs around on broadcast television, that's us. Um, and so you're going to hear more about our geographic spread, but Liberty Mutual is a pretty big company. Um, we have more than 800 offices worldwide, um, but our headquarters is in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, so really strong company presence there. And over, over the course of the last 100 plus years, um, the company has spread more and has a lot of representation across the U.S. and the world. 
So that's our company and Jaquita and I are here representing our what we call the Pride at Liberty ERG. Um, so our mission is probably not too different from the mission of your ERG or BRG. I'm going to keep using the acronym ERG because that's what I'm used to uh, know that some folks call it BRG. Um, so our mission is to provide a community for LGBTQ plus and ally employees and to promote a global culture that ensures equality in the workplace. So something I'm passionate about, happy to get behind and happy to be representing today. Um, I'm not going to go really deep into uh, all of, you know, how our ERG operates, but I did want to give just a little snippet of what our structure looks like so you can kind of get an idea of where Jaquita and I fit in our organization and how this works. Um, so we have, we're lucky to have at Liberty Mutual some executive sponsors, so some of our very top level leadership who are aligned with our, with our ERG to help us figure out our strategy, support us, be our champion, that kind of thing. Really wonderful to have that support at the top level. It's really helped our success. Um, and then we have four quote unquote pillars of the ERG that we're organized into. So we've got a communications, an operations, an ERG impact team, and then also a member experience team. So Jakeda and I sit in member experience. Um, we are both what is called a zone lead. So we oversee the member experience in a certain geography of the country for Liberty Mutual Pride at Liberty. Um, and the team of folks we work with are called ambassadors. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about what the heck that means uh, in a few minutes here. Awesome, and then Jenny, we had a question that came into the chat. Mm -hmm. um, do you have, do we have satellite work locations with every, with very small employee populations and may have a very few LGBTQ plus employees? Mm -hmm. And how have we reached out to those folks? You know, it's a great question. A lot of what we've done is where there's demand, we show up, right? So we try to have virtual content that can reach anybody, but we do have some folks in smaller offices who are like, hey, I'm the only one here, what can I do? And then we kind of focus more on like the ally programming or how to connect with other folks in different offices to build that community. Anything to add, Jakita? I was going to say, as we keep going and talk mm -hmm. to you a little bit more specifically about our structure and our ambassador program, I think this will hit on this uh, even more. But yeah, so we have, so for example, I sit in Chicago and there's, I think, four different Chicago, like Liberty offices. Some of them are like 10 people. Some of them are 100 people. So we have a couple of different pockets uh, of different size people uh, of, of well, different size offices, uh, in addition to a large amount of our employees, even before COVID that work, uh, work from home. Mm -hmm. So wide spectrum. Great. All right. So we've given you a little background about our company and our ERG. Um, Jaquita and I both don't sit in that Boston office. So we're kind of here to offer a non HQ centric perspective of how this works. Um, but kind of wanted to start. So if we're not in Boston, how do we get involved? Our ERG was really centered in that Boston location at first, but we both were able to come to it from our different locations. Um, so a few of you might be familiar with the Seattle skyline from Mountain Equal Summit a few years back. Uh, that's where I sit. Uh, Liberty Mutual has a pretty big office out here that I usually work from. Um, so I got involved back in 2015. I actually started the company in 2012. We didn't have a Pride ERG then. Um, we were kind of you know, just starting our DNI journey, if you will, as a company, um, the Seattle ERG chapter opened up. You know, they had lots of events, really like easy stuff for the most part coffee chats, uh, getting together after work, a lunch event. Um, and I kind of gravitated toward those. Um, I wasn't totally out at work. I was trying to figure out, like, is it okay to be out at work? What would that feel like? Um, so I was really happy to start seeing the events. So I went to a lot of them. Um, and for better or for worse, um, the people who were running the Seattle chapter, which we're calling ambassadors, you're going to hear more about that, um, noticed I was often there. And when one of those site leads had to leave the company uh, for another opportunity, I was persuaded that there might have been a little bit of uh, voluntelling, voluntold uh, in that. Um, but I, I stepped in as a lead for that location in 2018. And then I was tagged to lead the whole West Zone. So a little chunk of the country over on the left side, if you will. Um, and I've been doing that for a couple of years. I have a team of 10 site leads or ambassadors who sit in four different offices over on the West Coast. Um, and then, you know, like I mentioned, I'm not in the Boston office. I kind of grew up in this, so to speak, satellite office with Liberty Mutual. Um, 
And, you know, one big difference in culture is when I started at Liberty Mutual, folks who worked in Boston still wore full suits to work, like literally more buttoned up, right? In the <laughs> Seattle office, we were a little more casual, a little scrappier, more agile, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and also just, you know, a bit more progressive, right? Um, wanting to talk about the tough issues, keep pushing the envelope, that kind of thing. And something I observed from, you know, my seat out here is that sometimes it, members felt a little bit of like an us and them. So I didn't even know about the other pillars of the ERG at the time when I became a site lead. There's just kind of like a little bit of a disconnection challenge with those thousands of miles between our site and the headquarters. So for me, as I just mentioned a little bit ago, I'm in Chicago. So um, how I got involved, actually I started in, at Liberty five years ago. And I had, before I joined Liberty, had always done lots of work um, to support the LGBTQ plus community. I identify as an ally and have lots of friends um, that I have seen a spectrum of things, let's be honest. Uh, and so I just, for me personally, I believe what people are people regardless of anything. So I got a lot of involved in that uh, social justice and allyship work. I was in college and always followed me throughout uh, my career. When I got to Liberty, one of the reasons why I joined Liberty was because of their employee resource groups. Funny thing enough, the RDI office and ERG groups didn't really start until 2014. So I got here just in time. <laughs> <laughs> and so I uh, um, worked here for about a year or two. And then I got an email through like our intranet site saying like, hey, Liberty's marching the Chicago Pride Parade. I was like, oh, give it up. Let's go. I'm, 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 let's do this. I want to march. I want to support. Let's go. And so as I was marching, I met the, who was then our central zone lead. And we'll get into like the semantics of all that in a second. Um, and start talking with him about how to get involved. And just like Jenny, got kind of like voluntold about being involved. <laughs> Um, and at that point, I, I didn't know what I was actually getting involved in. There was no like training, quote unquote, about like how to do the, how to do what I was doing in terms of creating programs and marketing to, to other people within my area. I was just kind of going by the seat of my pants and figuring it out. And so I guess I did some good stuff because then I got tapped to actually become the central zone lead. <laughs> like, oh, okay. That's great. What is that? What am I doing? And how do I do it? So I got a little bit more clarity, but um, as I started having my own ambassador team to manage, I realized like, oh snap, I remember going, becoming an ambassador myself and not one, knowing I was an ambassador, two, not really knowing what I was supposed to be doing, what the expectations were, and, and three, like I said, how to do what I was doing. So keep that in your back mind as we keep progressing to this. <laughs> but now, uh, Central Zone leave my two, two years now doing this, managing a team of nine, and as I, again, as I already hinted a little bit earlier, that the Chicago kind of Midwest uh, is very different setup. So again, we have four offices in Chicago, two of them are downtown, two of them are in the suburbs of Chicago. So that's one major thing. Uh, if anyone lives in a city, you know, if you're in the city, you're a city person, if you're in the suburbs, you're typically a suburban person and you're not touching, you're not stepping foot into the city. So that's one challenge. And then we do have a large population that work remote from home, me being one of them. I've worked from home for three years now. Uh, and so that's one of the other reasons I really wanted to get involved is figuring out how I bring this ERG to someone from their home. So very different little mindset that we have here in the Midwest than from some headquarters in Boston because it's not a central office. It's kind of all hands on deck to figure it out as you go. And thank goodness, Jaquita, you were thinking about how to reach people from home because... <laughs> Right. I'm thinking of head already. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've heard a little about us and I think you've heard hints of we've learned some from a little trial and error, the like good old fashioned, you know, agile, fail fast, you know, succeed faster kind of an approach. Right. Um, so you'll hear kind of our lessons learned and how we've gotten to a place that we're excited to be today. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit more into what do we mean by ambassador? We've thrown that word around a couple times. It's in the title of this session. Um, so what's a private liberty ambassador? Really, um, this can be considered synonymous with like office lead or site lead, or in a lot of cases, co-lead. 
for a location. So, you know, just like you might think of the word ambassador, if I'm the ambassador from the US to Canada, right, I'm representing this other organization in another place, right? Um, so that's the idea behind that word choice there. Um, but basically this sprang up because we had people, you know, in my office being like, hey, we're queer, we're here, we wanna organize and meet each other, right? Um, so we had allies, we had LGBTQ plus community members saying like, we wanna be here too, like we see you in Boston and that's great, but hi, I'm over here, right? Um, so the ambassador program was just kind of in response to all this kind of demand and enthusiasm across the country. So the idea was, you know, we'll, we'll have these kind of official representatives so people aren't just kind of like making up their own thing, reinventing the wheel, right? Um, so we can kind of be in lockstep, work together, you know, like all, all those good reasons to come together and kind of be organized, right? Um, so the idea was, you know, we've got that official presence, an official line back and forth between the offices, right? So headquarters can figure out, okay, in Seattle, this is what they're going through. In, um, in Plano, Texas, this is their, you know, key concern or passion, right? Um, so really kind of allowing for more communication, you know, ears on the ground sort of a thing throughout our country because we've got a lot of diversity, right? Um, and also something that is great about the ambassador program is it allows for flexibility. So the kind of programming that my folks were looking for in the Seattle office might be different than what some of the folks that people in Chiquita's region around Chicago were looking for. Um, in the Seattle office, people were really just wanting like community building, right? Like, can we get together and chat and build connections? And then some other offices, they're like, we really want ally education. Like, that's our big thing right now. So we recognize it's not one size fits all with different political and geographical and cultural things that are happening throughout the country. Um, so this gives us the flexibility to address that. I also would add there that this is all voluntary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a big point, which will come back around at the end of this. Yes. You heard that we are volunteers, <laughs> voluntolds <clears throat> in some cases. So um, little timeline of our ERG. Like I mentioned, when I joined Liberty about eight years ago, we didn't have an ERG. I was really pumped when I noticed it launched in 2014 in Boston. And I was like, okay, like, but will you guys be here? And I got an answer following year. A lot of enthusiastic people in Seattle um, helped set up the first official chapter um, outside of the Boston location in my, my area. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, our ERG has been on a journey over the past years. And, you know, as, as all good DNI work goes, we're always continuing to be on that journey and continue on that journey. Um, so Seattle was our first kind of ambassador location in 2015. Um, further piloted the program in 2016. So we launched this having ambassadors in Indianapolis, Fairfield, Ohio, Charlotte, North Carolina. So you can kind of see this diversity of the geography between the cities. Um, 2017 added Plano, Texas, another large campus for us. So by 2017, we had gone to, we are, we are officially present in 10 different locations and we had 50 ambassadors. So multiple ambassadors kind of teaming up to lead their site um, for private liberty engagement. And this was the same year that Liberty achieved its first 100 on the Human Rights Campaign Corporate Equality Index. Um, so you can kind of see this progress all happening together. Um, so by 2018, we saw that in our annual survey we put out to members, satisfaction was going up. So we were able to reach more people, get people what they needed in terms of community, education, engagement, and we were starting to see the impacts of that. <clears throat> And then, you know, moving forward to closer to the present day, we now have almost 70 ambassadors in about 20 locations and are branching out to, you know, we have cross ERG teams where we talk with the other groups in our company and make programming that's more intersectional. Um, so really moving forward on our journey, um, continue to develop and grow as we have been since we started back in 2014. Jenny, we got a question that popped up. How yeah. do you include part-time employees mm -hmm. into all of this? We have that issue in one of our offices. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would say that we, I don't know tons of part-time employees in my personal zone, um, but I do know ERG activities are open to all folks. So it's just kind of um, making it fit in that schedule, but it's kind of like a open to everybody regardless sort of a situation. Yeah, for me personally, the only thing I can kind of like sort of correlate to this is I have an employee uh, that's an ambassador that works in a call center. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So that time commitment that he can give to uh, the ERG is very limited or constrained by his his schedule to be on the phones. Mm -hmm. And so we have been working together to figure out kind of how we can work with his manager to, to still be involved. Um, but thankfully something bigger than me came out as actually that goes into effect October 15th, that now we have what's called our DNI calendar that is public to all our employees across the whole company. And based off of that DNI calendar, the call center is now using that to help with scheduling employees to be off the phones and be involved in those programs. So it's minor steps. We still got more, more to go, but yeah, trying to, we, this is open to everyone. Um, but we've seen like getting the employees manager involved has been the, the key to making this all work. Sometimes it doesn't, and we have to adapt and, and, and move and groove as we, as we can to do that. Um, but hopefully that gives you some kind of a uh, couple of different nuggets of information to help with your situation. So we started with these just kind of individual chapters and we had a question in the chat box about, you know, you mentioned you moved to zones, like does that build better community somehow or tell me a little bit more about zones versus chapters. I'm going to touch on that here. Thank you for that question. Um, so the way we're organized is we have five different zone leads um, who oversee the team of ambassadors or site leads in their respective geographies. So we've got little stars on this map that show where we have official Pride at Liberty ambassador presence. Um, and really, you know, I think the camaraderie in the offices for the big offices has kind of built itself. Um, but for some of our smaller offices, I think having that zone structure is really key to get people connecting. And I have a few large offices in my zone, but even though, you know, they have no problem building community and thinking of ideas, you know, with, with just their office, um, but having them connected with people who, you know, they aren't too far away, we can still talk and complain about the weather in Washington state, right? Or in the general area, the wildfires that are burning, right? Um, but that exchange of ideas has been really nice. So, you know, getting all these 70 ambassadors into one meeting to collaborate is really challenging, right? Um, we don't do things like that that often just because we know how it goes, right? Um, but I can get my 10 folks and we meet regularly and just kind of, you know, you make friends in that meeting and you also say, hey, um, you know, in our Phoenix, Arizona office, we're doing this really cool event. I just wanted to share it with you in case like you under it. Here are all the materials you would need if you wanted to. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind the zones is, you know, put people together who might have some similarities, right? And kind of create these smaller teams and collaborate and work together more effectively. I'm loving seeing all the comments in the in the chat. Please keep doing that. If you're sharing ideas, this is the whole idea. Like that's the purpose of all this. So keep sharing ideas. I'm loving seeing all this come in. We do have another question, uh, Jenny, and maybe we can touch okay. on this really quickly. Sounds great. Because um, it's going to be a little bit out of scope of, of what we're doing in this session. But okay. you know, how do we work with other ERGs? And do we have a great example of that? And I know you and Seattle actually has. Yeah, so I'm going to give you a two sentence answer on that just because um, I, could, I could talk for an hour on that if you don't stop me. So we have a couple teams. We have one specifically in the Seattle office where the leaders of all the ERGs for that location, we get together and we meet monthly and we kind of rotate who owns that meeting um, to make sure that we're all kind of sharing and we just kind of talk about things that are in problems that are common issues or challenges um, and we've in several cases kind of spun off projects where we work together to to solve a problem that has arisen um, like communication we, we figured out a better template that works for all of us for example and we also have a national committee that does a similar thing um, and I will just say if you don't have a committee like that make one because I've made such good friends <laughs> by doing that um, it's just awesome to be able to collaborate with other folks doing similar work from a different angle so we've got other ERGs across the, our map as well. <clears throat> so um, you've heard about, you know, a little bit about how we're structured, what we mean when we talk about ambassadors. Just kind of curious from a semantics point of view, what do you call the ambassador in your company? A lot of you were in more than one location. So curious to see how you do, how do you refer to those people? Chapter lead, co-chair, oh, you don't have them, okay. A lot of chapter leads, that makes sense. Globally, that I like that. Okay, hub leader. Love it. And we're getting similar comments in the chat too. So this is awesome. Okay, right. cool. Okay, so, so some common language here, right? Um, but lots of different ways to refer to it. 
Perfect. So to keep, let's keep this conversation going. We, we told you like, hey, we have this ambassador program. So how to do? <laughs> so um, we've kind of said a couple of things already. I would say the biggest win is that we uncovered additional talent. So again, we started the ERG just in Boston and that's just one very small section of our talent base, um, right? So this able, enabled us to actually tap into people, talent that would not be officially like be able to like bring them in if we were just only siloed and continued in Boston. Do you mean like fabulous um, people like you and me, Jaquita? Yes, of oh, course. Okay. Like duh. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Wouldn't have been involved in this if that was the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, to someone's question earlier about that camaraderie, this did just that. Um, and twofold, I would say. So one as like ambassadors together. And then secondly, in order to have then local people on the ground getting this ERG presence outside and into their offices or onto their computers, because we were doing virtual events before COVID. Uh, and also we have a full blown like intranet, like we call it My Connections, it's like our Facebook page for our Pride uh, group as well, that all members, all anyone that wants to join can join in that, those conversations. Um, but again, not just being at their computer, giving them program community networks right in their back, back, backyard. And so a uh, satisfaction, someone I said, tell us more about the satisfaction surveys. So we don't have a sample, unfortunately, that we can give out, but basically we have some approved questions that we send out to everyone that is a member of our ERG. To be a member of our ERG is honestly just following and liking our My Connections Pride at Liberty page. Keep it very simple, very high level. So at the end of the year, or sometimes by, by annually, correct me if I'm wrong, Jenny, um, we sent out a survey with those approved list of questions to get feedback about how their experience has been and being a member of the ERG. And so I'll say, oh, sorry, Gita, go, no, ahead. go for it. No, I'll go say for it. I'm, I'm a big data person. Um, just start small and ask even a few questions like one to five, how satisfied are you, right? That alone can give you some good information and start to think about where you need to go. Awesome. On the flip side, we saw some other things that, like I alluded to, we both alluded to in our intros, <laughs> that being a, 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 an ambassador and not sometimes your, your primary job may not align to being this ambassador work. So for example, one of the things we ask our ambassadors to do is create programming. Programming is a very broad word, but that could be either an event, that could be an activity, that can be anything that your heart desires that promotes inclusivity, and highlighting the LGBTQ plus community. And so me as a in-campus recruiting as my primary job, I'm creating events like it's my job, because it is. <laughs> <laughs> so it's something that I am very accustomed to. And so even though I wasn't given a lot of direction when I became an ambassador myself, like I knew what I needed to do to like make something work in terms of coming up with a plan, executing that plan, promoting the event. So I actually have people to show up to my tabling event or to my, you know, movie uh, screening, right? And so that was slightly easier for me versus now when I have my own team of ambassadors and none of my ambassadors have that as part of what they do in their primary job. Like, oh, there's a, there's a miss there. There's some gaps. Uh, and then also the performance varied because as Jenny said in her chapter, in her, in her area with Seattle, uh, for example, they are, I would say, running on all cylinders. Like they crank out a programming events um, like they just are ready. <laughs> I would say you all do like five or six events a month. Whereas <laughs> we got a lot of energy out here. <laughs> I love it. I'm here for it. Um, but with my, with my ambassadors, I know like last year, I think I, we got like three events out for the year and we're like, woo! High five. And that's Killing great it. too, right? That's great. <laughs> so great, but it just varied. So on top of that, we also started, and these were some of the questions I even asked myself too. Um, like, where, where are we supposed to do this? Like, for example, there's a process to send out, the, uh, send out an approved email to your members in your, in your zone or in your city. But no one really knew that. <laughs> Again, I just mentioned about doing an event. Let's say you want a hosting, hosting a tabling event. Um, when you're giving out cupcakes to, we did this actually as an event, we gave out cupcakes as a celebration of a scoring 100% on the corporate equality index. But 
you have to order the cupcakes. You got to pick them up. You got to mm-hmm. plan for the table at the, at the office, got to bring some decorations. And then you got to promote that to get people to actually stop by your table. But like, how do you do that if you don't know those steps? Um, there sometimes became kind of siloed as well, where, you know, the, my Chicago ambassadors, and even though we tried to connect with each other, but like the Chicago ambassadors are doing an event and then Fairfield, Ohio is doing that exact same event, but no one's talking. Or I guess a better example of like Seattle and Chicago. So there are rework happening all the time that kind of didn't really need to be. Um, so again, we won't go through all these questions, but this is kind of started what I heard a lot. And as, to be honest, like I said, as me as an ambassador felt as well. So we're like, how do we, how do we, how do you change that? <laughs> so for our, our leadership team, when Jenny showed you those buckets, um, of member experience, ERG impact, operations and communications, everyone in leadership in those positions get together annually for a meeting. In October of 2019 was my, again, my first kind of year of being in leadership. And I was at this meeting and we had a section of this meeting where we were thinking about like, what does great member experience look like? And as we're fleshing those things out, I, and, and then luckily everyone got on board with me and Jenny was one of the, one of the first people that got to jump on board with me with this. He's like, we really need to empower our ambassadors. Like we cannot provide a good experience to our members if our ambassadors don't know what to do. Like, we're just like, hey, go do this. And we can't fault them for not being able to do it if we don't train them on how to do it. So this started this brainchild of our training, our ambassador training program. So gives you kind of a, a slate of how we took this process. Um, this actually, I know one of the questions were asked about like, are we going to share these slides? We unfortunately can't share all of them, but this may be one that we can drop in there. Check back in a few hours and into our session, after our session to see if we we've uploaded it. But maybe this can be a helpful guide if anyone needs to or wants to use it as you thinking about potentially planning this out for yourself. So starting October 2019, where this idea sparked, kind of brainstormed the, the, ser- the series that we are going to show you in a second. Um, drafted the series and got Ginny on board with me to do it with me. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and then we pitched the series to our manager, our pride manager, um, and started really building out what this looks like. What it came out to be would be four sessions. We made our first draft of those sessions. We made a second draft of those sessions. Then we presented it out to our vice chairs to get their final approval and sign off, which we did. Then we made it like in a final, final versions of those four sessions, sent out invites to the training sessions ahead of time so the ambassadors could hopefully, you know, block off time to commit to doing so. And we kicked the training off in, in January. So it took us three months to get there, kicked it off in January. Then the series ended in February. I'll tell you why in a second as I keep going. Uh, we sent out a survey to collect feedback, analyze results, presented those out to our vice chairs. And like I said, you'll see in a second what that, those results look like. I'll pause there for a second to see if we had any other questions that popped up in the chat. Haven't seen too many. Somebody asked about how we balance our day and our gay jobs. <laughs> um, we do do that balance and we've got a little section at the end where we're going to chat more about that. But yes, a challenge. Um, Scheduling. My calendar is my best friend. Color coding <laughs> is my second right. best friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it, it is very hard. A hundred percent. We should be getting paid for this. You know, I'll put it out there. I'm sure, I'll, I'm sure everyone, I'm sure everyone feels that way. I'm sure I'm not the only one. Uh, it's a lot of work, but we, we, we balance it. Um, it, it and I, for me personally, it's because it's something I'm very passionate about. Yep, so same. if I have to, you know, log on early, stay on a little bit later to, to kind of make sure all my T's are, are crossed, the I's are dotted for both my gay job and my day, my day job, I'll do it. That's right. Um, Jaquita, you're teed up really perfectly with a question. Can you share a little bit more about what was in each of those sessions? Look at that. I'm so happy you asked. So that's exactly <laughs> what we're about to do. <laughs> um, thank you for that perfect question. That's so, <laughs> so we had four sessions. 
as I described. And before we even got to those sessions, we sent out kind of like a precursor to all our ambassadors, like, hey, this new ambassador training is coming. And we got immediate response, as you can see on your right hand side, um, about excitement for this. So the idea that we had and, you know, enabling our ambassadors, it looks like we were onto something because we weren't the only person, people are feeling like that. So we have four sessions and we are going to go, I'm about to walk through each session right now. And we do already have in our workshop as some of the resources, we have mock versions of each of the sessions so that if you want to replicate, you already have at least the template to start from and you're not starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's yeah, save yourself some work. Check out the file section. We're here for you. Yes. So the first session was just a pride overview. Who the heck are we? What do we stand for? What are we doing? Why are we doing it? To give everyone that common language to, to know, like if someone asked you, hey, what is pride at liberty? You, everyone's going to re regurgitate the same thing <laughs> and have that knowledge. So that was 21. And then the following sessions really gives specific as a specific topic with valuable information that they could apply. So that's the first one. What the heck is our ERG? <laughs> uh, and then there we gave something uh, also like we have our own certified allies program that we not not me and Jenny, another part <laughs> partner of our of our ERG created. So we covered that. But just some other great things about our, that our ERG offers so that ambassadors can take part of it, hopefully too, but be able to promote that as well to the local members. Katie, we've got a few chat box questions. I think a few of them we're going to address later, but one that I don't think we will explicitly later on is, is this training only for brand new ambassadors or did everybody go through this? And how did, did we have to realign folks as we did this? Great question. So we offered this to all ambassadors. At that point, we had 69 ambassadors and this training went out to every one of them. Um, so if new, and we, again, we wrote this out at the end of January, we had these, um, all the presentations in a common folder, uh, we, an MS team site that we use so that if there was an ambassador that came on, let's say in March who missed the training, they, the first part of like their onboarding is saying, hey, please go to X file to see trainings one, two, three, and four to kind of like self get yourself ready. Um, but we only did this once at the beginning of the year, which is something that we are, to be honest, are thinking about to be do it twice a year. Cool. So the second training was all about processes and resources. How do you do your job? Where can you find the resource to do your job? <laughs> which we'll get to in a second was a very interesting concept uh, and one that we thought was going to be a real drag and real dud because it's just very like cut and dry uh, but we shared resources like where do you find the templates to send an email and again how do you send out an email a mass email to your local community uh, but went through you know before we got to the session jenny and i and we talked to all of our other zone leads and talked to some of our ambassadors as well to figure out where those common resources and those common processes so that we would know what we want to highlight and then in this we also said okay if you're looking to send an email out here's how you do it and oh here's the person in charge of this process in case you need something because again, our ERG, if you're, and I'm sure I'm, we're not the only people that would think like this, but like we were so siloed in our, on our own areas that we didn't know. We didn't get it out to, to see other people. Training three was all around event creation. So again, a lot of people didn't have that in their background. We're going to give it to you. And then each of these sessions, as you're seeing as we're progressing, they are 30 minutes, um, two different time options each because we want to be mindful of people on the West Coast and East Coast and in the Midwest, um, but going through the same content. But how do you figure out a, a, an event? How do you plan it out? How do you send the emails out? How do you get people excited? How do you know what money you have? I think I saw that as a question. Um, we are given, given the, not that we don't decide, <laughs> unfortunately, how much money we're given. And then we as zone leads, like, le like levitate that, not levitate that, like, <laughs> <laughs> leverage we might that. levitate it. Who knows? Yeah. We do leverage that across all of our, our areas. <laughs> and then our last training, training number four, was about project management skills. Because truly, y'all, that's what we're doing. <laughs> 
but again, a lot of people didn't have that as their background. So we want to give them those basic tools um, so they have it to do their job. And then after each session, we sent out a follow-up email telling them, hey, here's the session that you just had. Here are the links to everything that we talked about. Here are the slides to everything we talked about. And any important documents that you may need from this particular session, here it is for you. So I just gave you the full rundown. Now I want to hear from you. Do you feel like this is feasible to replicate? Again, we gave you the templates. <laughs> so hopefully that helps. Um, but honest answer, seeing, seeing how we broke it down in four different sessions, would this be something that you can say, okay, I maybe can get behind this and do it in, in my company? Seems like we've got a lot of confident folks out there. Some who might not okay. be totally sure. Something that we found is really, you know, something I think about a lot is keep it simple, right? Just having something out there, I think helps people immensely, right? So if you take, if you're on the fence, take a look at the templates and think, are there a few things from here I could do? And even just do one session to kind of get people more on the same page, help them feel a little more confident in their job. Yeah. I'm pretty happy. No one said not at all. That was that's right. In this, in this I'm into workshop, it. I so mean, you we're, you can put it away. if you're you know yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm really happy to see that folks seem to think either yeah for sure or maybe right. That's awesome. Um, so we asked you that question before. We really sold it. Um, but we're gonna share. I mentioned I'm a little bit of a data nerd. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the results we measured, um, and how we did. Um. So getting into that here. So we sent out a survey afterward. We were talking about our ERG satisfaction survey. That's something we sent out um, you know, to all members, kind of saying, how happy do you feel? What do you need from the ERG? This is a separate survey that was just about, hey, you folks who went through this training series, tell us how it did, right? Um, we use just a platform called Survey Analytics. There's a whole lot of different ways you can do this. Don't need any sort of like technical expertise to pull this together. Um, but we were really happy with what we saw. Um, the majority of folks said they were highly satisfied. We use that one to five scale, you know, um, from not satisfied at all to highly satisfied. So we were real happy with that. Um, we also, you know, Jaquita and I had spent some time like, okay, so like how often do we hold these? What's the right cadence? People are balancing their day jobs. Um, people are balancing different time zones and meeting schedules, right? Um, so what we landed on, like Jaquita said, is we had one 30 minute session a week, um, but there was, there was two options. So you could attend that same session you know, at time A or time B, right? Um, we kept it to 30 minutes. You know, at one point I was like, Jaquita, can we do an hour? I feel like there's so much to talk about. And Jaquita was like, well, people are busy, Jen. <laughs> so we, we kept it to the 30 minutes, right? Um, and people kind of liked that cadence and timing. Um, so obviously different things work for different people, right? Um, but for the majority of our members, 30 minutes, one session a week for four weeks, just kind of like, you know, crank that course out worked for folks um, and kind of helped them feel like they were hitting the ground running as the year started, right? Um, Jaquita mentioned that, that that session about just here are the processes, here are the resources to your job. We were like, oh, this one's going to be boring. Like, no one's going to like it. Um, Jaquita facilitated this one, and I'm going to give her some credit that she did a really nice job of being engaging with what we had anticipated to be boring material. Um, but we noticed that, you know, this was the one that was most likely to be rated as people's favorites out of the four sessions. So if it was an even split, each one of them would have been 25% rating it as their favorite session. So a little bit of a lead there. Um, and what that said to me was like, people just don't know. It's easy to kind of be like, well, we have all these resources and standard work. Why aren't the ambassadors <laughs> using them? Like, hmm, maybe it's not the ambassadors. <laughs> maybe we didn't tell them. Maybe we didn't make it easy for them to find it, right? And that's really what that session did. And we actually even included a cheat sheet with that session. Like, here's all the links. Like, I think the slide literally says all the links. <laughs> um, so it was just, you know, make it easy, right? And people were like, yes, now I, now I can find that process. I know there's a process, right? Instead of just kind of feeling like, ooh, what do I do? 
Um, we also looked at attendance. So we have about 70 ambassadors. The majority of them attended the trainings, which was great. We know you're always going to have with these volunteer positions. Some people might be a little unengaged or get slammed with a work project, whatever you have. Um, but we were pretty pleased at the percent we saw attending and we didn't see the attendance drop off. So that was a really nice sign to me that, you know, we were asking people to give us 30 minutes a week over the course of four weeks and people kept coming back. Um, so they were finding value in that training, which is a great sign to me. Um, and we had a, just kind of for context, out of our ambassador group, we had about 40% of people reply to our survey. Um, sometimes I have to do surveys in my regular day primary job. Um, so when I look at a 40%, I'm like, that's great. They paid attention. A lot of people gave me feedback. Um, so that was another point we were happy with. <clears throat> So we also just kind of, you know, you always ask for comments, right? Um, the green were the things that, you know, really were just kind of positive and sentiment. The gray here were things like, you know, like maybe this format would work better for me. Um, so things like, you know, can you change the timing, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, one of the, I think really the only piece of constructive feedback we got was around technical difficulties. Now, this was before we were like total Zoom pros <laughs> because, um, you know, 2020 has made us all really more adept in this. We at the time, we were, had Zoom at that point. We didn't have Zoom. <laughs> we were using we were using Skype for Skype. our meeting. Um, we use a lot of Microsoft products at Liberty. They often work really great for the need. But for a, we had a couple instances as we were trying to give this training. It was virtually because it was two ambassadors across the country, right? We're not going to fly them all to one location for 30 minutes a week for four weeks, right? It had to be virtual even then. Um, and sometimes the technology had some challenges that arose. I think now we're a little bit better poised to that. But you know, anytime you're trying to connect people across, I think we all have experience with this now. Um, we could plan for that maybe a little bit more um, and, and figure out the right technology to use. So with that, we started out and we asked you, what's the first word that comes to mind when you think about expanding your ERG outside the headquarters? So now what's the first word that comes to mind? If you don't mind pulling out that mentee again and telling us what word comes to mind. Ooh, feasible, nice. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm feeling the positivity. I don't see challenging. But if we did, that would still be okay. because it, it, it would still be it okay. Is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but okay, we were hoping thanks, from folks. this. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it gives a little bit of more. Okay, there's challenging. Guidance. Keeping it real. Yeah. Love this. Awesome. Cool. You know, it is exciting. I feel like our ERG has grown and gained a lot. Like we talk about having some growing pains and learning lessons, but Overall, I think really positive experience on a lot to gain from these kinds of efforts. Yeah, 100%. We had a couple questions in the chat that actually I think we'll get to um, okay. something that we're going to talk about next because this, this is all great. I, you know, selfishly <laughs> think it is. And based off what you all say, it, it seems like it's great. Um, but there is still an element of this that is, to be honest with you all, challenging. As we mentioned, being an ambassador is completely volunteer. And that comes with a whole, you know, slew of uh, opportunities. And with that, one of the things that we learned, um, Jenny and I is talking and talking to other people is that it really comes down to leading by influence to really make this ambassador program work. Training, I think 100% really gives a great foundation so that people can do their job, but then we got to get them like all riled up to again, actually do the work. Because <laughs> again, we're volunteers and um, someone asked, like, it's it, it in our annual reviews. So as leadership, it is. As local ambassadors, it's not yet. So gives it a whole another perspective, right? <laughs> so some of the positive ways that we have been able to influence our ambassadors to, to be involved and be present, and we said it a couple of times, of building a strong community community with their ambassadors in the same area. So my Chicago ambassadors, making sure they feel like they are in sync and, and it's making um, their lives easier and better pride job and day job. Um, and then also to be honest, for me personally, I have, it's been so rewarding to be a part of the leadership team. I would have never met Jenny through not doing this. And she's one of my favorite people. <laughs> Like, and that's just, I'm saying it because she's here, because it's true. <laughs> I would have never gotten that opportunity 
to mm -hmm. meet Jenny, be working with Jenny on so many different projects besides this. Um, and it's getting me more motivation to be more involved. And so doing that for ambassadors, how do we get them? And I think this is something we're starting to work on too, but not just in their local level of being involved, but how do we get them that exposure too across ERG and within our own ERG, but also other ERGs as well. Mm -hmm. Celebrating their wins um, and celebrating those with their manager. So to, I, like I said, it's not an ambassador role. It's not in their evaluation. And to be honest, even as his own lead, my evaluation of my ambassador is very loose to interpretation. We don't have anything for, for like per se that we're grading them on. Um, but I make sure when they are doing well, tell their manager. At the end of the year, I send a little paragraph to their manager about what my ambassadors did and how they did and what they still need to work on. It'd be, you know, fair both sides, but ensuring that they have that information so that on that back end, they're engaging their, their employees to stay involved. So Ginny, on the flip side, what's yeah. the beginning of both sides? Where, so, what's it there? so there's positives, positives far away the negatives. You know, we've got great relationships, great new ideas, right? All sorts of good stuff has come out of this, but it's not always easy. Our training template might be helpful, but it's not gonna, you know, it's not, it's not the magic wand, right? Um, so some of the challenges um, are like Jaquita was mentioning, it's all, people are volunteering to do this on top of their primary job responsibilities. Um, and we don't have formal authority over those folks. So if my manager says, I need you to do this thing and I need it done by Friday, like I'm doing it by Friday, right? I've got, I've got incentive and a lot of motivation to get it done. Um, and I bring that to my pride job because I'm able to, right? Um, but, you know, I can't tell my ambassador that they have to do something, right? Um, it really is this leading by influence. Um, and then interestingly, a lot of the folks in these zone lead positions um, don't have formal management experience. So it's an awesome development opportunity, right? To say, hey, I'm managing this team of 10 people in different locations, right? Um, but it also means that there's some learning on the, the zone lead job, right? Um, so it's kind of trying to balance how do I get folks excited? How do I motivate them and create buy-in? Um, so that can be a challenge, but I think kind of leaning on some of the stuff that Jakita was talking about is like, you know, you want to do this because you're trying to develop project management skills. So really tying it back, right? Um, and really that also goes to the manager. Jakita talked about, you know, syncing up with the manager so they know that the person's doing great work. Um, it's also showing the manager like, this looks good for you if your employee is doing this important DNI work for the company, right? So kind of making sure that everybody sees um, why they want to support this work. And again, it's not always, it's not easy street, um, but but really putting the effort in because you do have to create it in a lot of cases people are busy we know how it goes right um and then just helping people you know because they are busy with their primary job or their day job right um and something i often tell my team and this is just something that's like a personality or a personality and a philosophy i bring is perfection is the enemy of the good you know I try to strive against perfectionism i don't always win in that um in that battle um but you know our ambassadors, if you can do a small event, get people together for coffee, like that, it's not like it's no effort, right? But just having something, you know, me back in 2014, where I wasn't really out of work, being able to show up to the coffee, that alone was enough to have a big impact for me. So I try to share that with my ambassadors, like, don't, you know, don't kill yourself trying to do the world's greatest, most impactful event. Just do something low lift um, and that kind of helps balance that yeah I have my day job but okay Jenny's telling me you know I can pull this off with 45 minutes of effort I can do that awesome we want to hear from you all we're not I would say like got this unlock completely yet <laughs> we're still learning and growing our, in our mm -hmm. own development too so interested to hear from you all um, again use Minty or put it in the chat here but what are ways that you lead by influence and this could be and your ERG or also your, your day job as well. We can cross worlds here because let's be honest, they do. Mm -hmm. How do you lead by influence? Share some best practices with us and with everyone that's on, on today's workshop. Lead by example. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mentoring is great. And I think we've got just some organic mentoring, you know, throughout the ERG as well as doing some formal stuff. Oh, look, all this good stuff. Transparency, explaining the why. 
Lots of good tips here. Meeting people where we're at. You know, I heard that in a couple mm. sessions earlier, and I really like that. Showing up as an ally for other ERGs. I love that, too. This is great stuff. Thank you for providing, folks. One thing personally I've also learned in this too is to, again, to be very transparent and share with you all too. I had a situation that didn't end well with one of my ambassadors. There was one ambassador that um, just wasn't pulling his weight. And so I tried several times. That was a great advice, like to meet them where they are and just like say like, hey, what do you, what do you wanna do? Um, but I need you to at least do that. Um, I got the, the manager, kind of asking actually my manager, my primary manager, my primary job manager, and my <laughs> private manager, like, hey, give me some advice on how to, how to help this individual. Um, and unfortunately, we just decided to, that he wasn't fit to be an ambassador. And so sometimes it has to, you know, I tried for the entire year, um, the end of 2019, going into mid-2020 up until June. Um, really was trying to, to meet him where he was and, and keep him engaged, but you also have to be realistic to know like, okay, this is a hard thing to do, but I don't think this is going to be the best fit for you in this role. Happy to maybe get you into another role within our ERG, but this isn't, mm -hmm. this isn't that. So sometimes you have to have those, those real conversations with yourself and with that person too, um, because also at all, like we're all in this together, but we can't all do it ourselves. So thank you all so much for all this great information here. We've been doing Q&A the whole time. Yeah, but. we really have. I have a couple ones that are I'm sad that, you know, we're getting short on time here, so we're not able to answer every question during the discussion here. A couple that stood out to me, Jaquita, one person asked, have we had trouble finding ambassadors in more conservative areas? I would say probably. <laughs> um, I know for me in my area, what I try to do and I try to do still continuously is like post on again, our, our my connections, our internet page, like, hey, if you want to get involved, like reach out to me personally, happy to figure out what is the right position within our ERG that works for you. I've had people reach out to me that way, which is awesome, but I'm sure I'm missing some people, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, we, I know there's one example where the office was more conservative people, you know, just because of the culture, less people were out and they did like a very ally focused kind of programming. We talked about flexibility, right? With different locations. That was one way to hedge it. And we also had, a, oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Chiquita. I was going to say, I see one in here. How do we define the difference between allies and ambassadors? Mm -hmm. I'm an ally and I'm an ambassador. I'm both. <laughs> yeah. Ambassador is the person actually doing the work to put on the programming, to the events, to the activities, to bring our ERG presence to their local area. However they see fit, um, that ambassador can be an affinity member or it can be an ally. Whoever is going to do the work. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we're, we're happy to have him as ambassador. Um, Jakita, I also saw a couple questions around the theme of how has this changed um, with the pandemic? Yeah, so that's something to be honest, we haven't, we did this program at the beginning of 2020. And so we will be gearing up to do this at the beginning of 2021. Um, and we will be meeting, I would say, Jenny, hopefully you're okay with this in like a few weeks <laughs> <laughs> um, to figure out because no, this is the first iteration of this. And mm -hmm. I think we have some great ideas. So like one of the comments was that they wish it was more interactive. Mm -hmm. So again, now that we have access to Zoom, we can make breakout sessions mm -hmm. so that people can interact with each other one on one basis versus just a facilitator talking at them. Yep. So I think we have some couple ideas that we're going to reiterate like, and rework and, and make another ev evolution of this mm -hmm. um, to then produce out for 2021. Yeah. And in the meantime, our ambassadors have been producing virtual content in Seattle last week. We just had a member connect where we all jumped on a virtual meeting. Um, so one, one last question, someone asked what the certified ally program is. I saw this one come up a couple times. It's like an LGBTQ allyship 101 course. Um, that's we probably a, a great conference sec session for next year. <laughs> right. Well, that is maybe. We'll tell people, but basically we made a three part kind of online virtual program that you can self go through. Um, and then once you go through those three sessions, you become a certified ally. Wow. That was an hour. That I can't believe like, it's over. <laughs> I hope this was helpful for you all. I saw some really kind comments in the chat.
chat so much um, for joining our session. Hopefully it was helpful. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on a limb and say it was based off of the like the feedback we got and the word clouds we got. So um, please stay connected with us. We have our information here on the screen for a purpose. Um, feel free to reach out to us, email or LinkedIn. Um, like we said, there is those template um, PowerPoint for each of those four sessions already on the Pathable site in our session for you to download and use at your discretion. Uh, and then if you check back in a couple hours, we can see which slides in the, our presentation we showed that we can share with you all. But thank you so again, much for your thank time. You. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the conference. Enjoy Reach the summit. Thanks. Bye, everyone.